just want to say, praise ye the Lord. Yes. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? Yes. Mm. How many of you are glad to be here on Resurrection Sunday? Yes. One more time. I'm from the side. We say one more again. Okay. Amen. I'm not sick. I'm not laid up somewhere unable to speak. My mouth works. I have the activity of my limbs. I feel full southern today. Come on now. I, I, I have the activity of my limbs, the full movement. There's nothing hindering me from praising God. Amen? Amen. And I'm grateful and glad about the whole thing. So today is Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen. And I know that in churches across the land and around the world, deep, somber messages are being delivered about the pain and the blood and the tears and the sacrifice, but our senior bishop, Jacqueline Holland, wrote to uh, the clergy, the pastors on this week, and she said to us, I want you to focus on the good things, amen? Focus on the joy, less about the blood and more about the resurrection, because the true miracle is that Christ arose and Christ came so that we might live, amen? Amen. Amen. Christ said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. So why would we focus on just the tears? The tears were a part of the process, but not the whole process. So it's time to do a, a check. We need to re, what's that word? Recalculate. We need to recenter ourselves, get ourselves back in alignment with what the true message and purpose is. So my message today, if I have to give you a title, is Jesus the Rebel. Okay. Everybody want to talk about this meek, lowly, humble Jesus, the carpenter, the peacemaker, and he was that to an extent. But this is the same man that went around and he was talking to women from different tribes and different uh, groups, ethnic groups. He was over there talking to the woman at the well. If anybody had seen him, if the Pharisees had seen him, they surely would have wanted him hung up and strung up and kicked out, beat down and, and, and abused, right? Because the, the practice was, oh, we stay amongst ourselves. We're righteous. We're pious. We're holy. We're better than thou. Well, Christ said, I'm talking to everybody. Hey, you tax, pay, uh, tax man, come on down out that tree. Let me talk to you real quick. Everybody said, ooh, look at him talking to that man. That bad man that comes and knocks on our door and takes our cattle and our, our, our gold coins, right? But guess what? Christ was living and giving an example of what being Christ-like is about. The good Reverend Marcus preached a mighty message on Thursday night. I sat there and watched it again last night, and I, I said, now why? I said, me and you, there's too many crossovers there in the message. But then God said to me, that's confirmation that the word was, was, was approved by me. Amen? Yeah. So one of the things I want you to understand is that Jesus was a rebel, and that Jesus resisted against the social mores of the day. What does that mean? They had rules. Pharisees had a whole lot of rules. Rules, 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 rules. They had so many rules, I don't think the common person would have even possibly been able to keep up with them. Maybe some of the, the scholars would have been able to keep up with 75%, but even they would have slipped up if they went outside and did something on a certain day. On the Sabbath, you weren't supposed to heal nobody. How are you gonna tell the Son of Man, the Son of God, that you can't heal somebody? on the day that was created by him. Amen? Can I get an amen, somebody? Oh, Jesus, you shouldn't be healing nobody. Instead of saying, oh my God, look at the miracle that has taken place. Let's rejoice. Let's jump up for joy. Let's be excited. Look at the, the person, the presence that has been put before us with these miraculous powers that can heal, that can resurrect life, that can change life, that can improve and empower. Instead of just jumping for joy and shouting with praise, they ran out with gossip. If all you get from a miracle is gossip, you need to reevaluate yourself. Amen? 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 If all you got out of God working a miracle in somebody else's life was gossip, how she get that house? She ain't she got bad credit. <laughs> how they afford to go over there on, on the Africa on a trip? Last, last, they was borrowing money last year. Right? You should, instead of saying, my God, I'm so happy for you, because I know that since you got yours, that means I'm next in line for a miracle, amen? Yeah. That means I'm next in line for a miracle. 
We've got to refocus and recenter our, realign our thinking to make it more Christ-like. Yeah. We've gotten off the path. Mm. We've gotten off track. Also, we need to stop being so sanctified and sanctimonious. Amen? Oh my, I couldn't possibly go over there because they don't do it like we do it over here. I grew up missionary Baptist, and Lord knows we had a lot of rules. And I remember my grandmother, God bless her soul, she was first lady at one point, and I remember her saying about a good friend of hers, I think the lady was either Methodist or Presbyterian, they loved each other dearly. They went to each other's house, occasionally visit each other's churches, for like Women's Day and things like that. And I remember one day she just said out the side of her mouth, oh, I love her, but you know, she ain't gonna make it because she goes over there to that church. Mm -hmm. She's not a missionary Baptist. <laughs> and the missionary Baptist ain't been around but that long. Amen? <laughs> so come on now. So we gotta, sometimes we gotta come down, and don't come and get me, grandma, I love you. So sometimes we gotta come down and off to our high horse, right? That's why I love our what we believe statement. It says that God is everywhere present. Not just at the Baptist, not just at the Catholic, not just at at the, the coaching or the Pentecostal. God is everywhere present. And this is the part that some Christians don't like. God is at the, synagogue, the Jewish synagogue. Because guess what? God was at the Jewish synagogue before there was a Christian church. That's right. That Jesus was a what? Jew. Yeah. Come on, somebody. God was in the Muslim mosque and the, the Jewish synagogue and the tribal ritual. If God made all things, then God is in everything. Yeah. We've given too much power to the enemy. I'm getting off message, but I get excited. I don't, I don't, hey, come on now. Listen, we get, we, the enemy has no power. You remember the story of Job? The only way that Job was able to, to inflict anything on Job was that God gave Job the, uh, gave the enemy the permission. Okay, you can do this, this, and this, but you, even then there were some restrictions. You can't do this, this, and that. You can't touch him, the hair is on his head, but you can touch, touch his children, his servants, his cattle, all that. Take all his money in his houses, but don't touch him. So let's stop giving the enemy power. Yeah. Again, yeah. let's recenter, refocus, and realign. Amen. So now let me get to my notes, because I didn't even look at them yet. <laughs> Amen. God is good. So Jesus was the rebel. Jesus was the resistance, fighting oppression and religious subversion, right? Jesus went into that, that temple and saw those people gambling and, and, and doing all casting lots. And what did Jesus do? Turn that table over. You will not be making a mockery of my father's house, of my God's house. You will not be making a mockery of what I've been sent here to do. We've given you this. We've given you God's love, uh, unconditional love. We've given you blessings. We've given you life. We've given you health. We've given you strength and purpose. And here you say, oh, well, we're going to come into this holy place and we're going to throw some dice. Mm -hmm. You've seen them leroying them on the corner and they're shooting dice and they got little wrinkle of dollar bills down there. You wouldn't want that in the house of God, would you? Mm -hmm. Jesus came in and said, uh-uh, not up in here. We're not tolerating that. We're not having that. So let's erase that image of this, this pure, pretty boy Jesus that, that uh, never said a bad word to anybody. Amen. Because when you go in and turn tables over somewhere, I'd imagine all your language is not good. You don't turn tables over and just say, oh, hi, how are you? Good morning. No, you probably came in with a couple words when you turn them tables over. Amen? Because that's the only kind of language that would fit this, the scenario. So stop uh, painting Jesus. I call it pretty boy Jesus. Stop talking about pretty boy Jesus. Amen? Talk about the real Jesus, practical Jesus. Jesus that tore stuff up, knocked stuff over dealt with the, the people that were thought to be less than, Jesus that dealt with the outcasts, the aliens, the prostitutes, the people that were from foreign lands and different tribes, the people that had jobs that some folks thought were less than, that's my Jesus. I wouldn't want to serve any other Jesus because we're here at Unity Fellowship Church Movement doing what? We're tearing down all the strongholds, yes. all those rules that they told us we had to abide by, we're taking it all down. Yes. We ain't throwing the baby out with the bathwater. But it's a lot of them rules got to go. Oh, well, women can't preach. Some of the best preachers I've ever heard were women. Some of the strongest preachers I've ever heard were women. Some of the most anointed preachers I've ever heard were women. Amen? Yeah. And 
I, when I grew up, we had at the Missionary Baptist, the, my, the pulpit was up on a riser. And down here, like where I'm standing, that's the only place a woman can come and, and speak. So on Women's Day and other programs, women would stand down here with a little small little podium like this. And all the men could be up here. A man who wasn't ordained could go stand up there. But a woman, no matter how holy, no matter how ordained by God, no matter what gifts and talents she had displayed, she had to stand. So guess what? <laughs> Out the door with that rule. <laughs> Amen? We ain't doing that. Jesus was a rebel, and so are we. Yes. Knock it down. Tear down the strongholds. He used to say the devil is a lie. Well, that's a lie that the women can't preach. Women are great preachers. Women are anointed. And probably if we had let more women leave, we wouldn't be in the predicament we're in now. Come on now. Look where the world is today. Yeah. Come on now. Crazy. Women, if we let the women leave, we'd probably it'd be so much peace, we might almost be back to the Garden of Eden. Mm. You might not even have to go to work tomorrow. Because oh, everything will be taken care of. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? So, Jesus was, represents re resistance. But Jesus also represents renewal. Renewal. Christ represents the church anew. Inclusive, open, progressive. We are the church anew. And that's not to say that unity is the, is the end all be all, right? Because we said that God is everywhere present. So that means that God can be in other places, right? And that means that our other places that we came from, some of us came out of Kojic, some of us came out of Baptist, some of us came out of Pentecostal and Catholic and what have you. That means there's room for those places. As we're growing, that means that God can also bless them to grow too. I was encouraged when I saw the AME Church has, I can't think of her name, I can see her face right now. They have the, the, the woman bishop. I said to God, be the glory. That's the oldest African-American church in this country, the uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church. And they now have a black woman leading the organization. I said, okay, there's progress. So we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. That means there's hope. Keep praying, saints. Keep praying. Hope is coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to be good. I'm trying to behave myself today. All right. So Christ represents renewal, right? So what do we want to do? What do we need to do in that renewal phase? We are the agents of change. That means that we've been sent here to make a difference. As agents of change, and Reverend Marcus, Deacon Darrell, Brother Tim, Brother, uh, Lord knows, Brother Bruce knows, he's been doing this work a long time. Deacon Teresa, we know that being agents of change is not always easy. Well, Amen? Shake that. A couple years ago, this room would have been packed. But guess what? Not everybody was fully ready for change. Some folks had to go back where they came from. They weren't ready to be fully freed and liberated and living in their truth. They want to believe that who the God made them is a sin, is wrong, is, is, and that they're undeserving of God's love. So what did they have to do? They had to sneak out the door and go back. And then I called them, or a deacon called them, oh, I'm back over here, so-and-so, where I grew up at. I don't think I'm going to stay here. Okay, baby, we, we taught you. We showed you the light. We brought you all the And somebody said, oh, a couple people said, I'm not being fed. Baby, I laid the buffet table out before you. The only thing else I could have done was take your head and push it down into the food. But that's not my job. My job is to help prepare the table. Amen? Yes. And I even will pull your seat out and push it up for you like a gentleman. You sit. But now if you sit there with the fork and knife in your hand and you can't find nothing on this buffet, spiritual buffet table to consume, that ain't my fault. Amen? Amen. So, as agents of change, there will be challenges. Amen? There will be challenges. Somebody said there will be challenges. There will be challenges. But that's all right. That's all right. We went through some stuff. We spent many hours on the phone. We met in this room. We had challenges. We, had, we, had, we mourned those who moved on. We shed tears. We were angry. We said a couple words we probably shouldn't have said as Christians. But we had to go through that process. Right? Even Jesus found people in his camp that weren't truly rocking with him. Come on now. How many of us remember Judas? Somebody was in his camp that wasn't with him. And they had seen him work miracles, seen him perform. Imagine having a front row seat to witness all that Jesus had done and still finding a way 
to turn your back. Amen? Something ain't right with that picture. But that's not my sermon today. Amen? Amen. So Jesus represented resistance. That's your first point. And your second point was that Jesus represents renewal. Amen. The third point is that Jesus represents relationships. First, the relationship between God and Jesus and us. Amen? Yes. And then Jesus represented that, showed us that we can have relationships with people that were not like us. Yes. Why do we have racism in the world today? Why do we have sexism in the world today? Why do we have ethnic, so-called ethnic cleansing in the world today? When Jesus showed us clearly that we could easily get along with people from other ethnic groups, people from other countries, people from other faith walks, as all we had to do was drop all our rules and our barriers. Oh, well, if I socialize with that person, they believe that that might rub off on me. That ain't got nothing to do with what you believe. You still go home and pray to your God, they go home and pray to your God. And guess what? At the end of the day, it's all the same God, called by different names with different practices on how to reach God because they were in different geographic locations and the, the belief systems or, uh, originated at different times in history. That's the only difference. If you look at all the major religious stories, the stories are the same. We were deaf. Growing up, we were taught not to read other religious groups, books, textbooks. But as I became a teenager, bless you, and I started reading some of those books myself, I was like, well, wait a minute. You go all the way back to the ancient Egyptians. And they talked about the sun, the resurrection. It's the same story repeated over and over throughout time. Amen? So what, what we need to focus on is what we have in common. What we have more in common than we do not. So let's focus on that. Relationships. We have to build relationships. I have an atheist friend. People say, well, how could you be a preacher and have an atheist friend? Well, guess what? We've gotten into it a few times over the years. I, I, we're still friends, and we hang out. He took me out for my birthday a few weeks ago. But we've learned certain things we don't talk about too much. Because we are definitely going to disagree. Mm -hmm. But an interesting part to me is, this is how God works. He always says to me, well, you seem so grounded. You seem so balanced. You don't seem stressed out about stuff. But I am. I said, that's my faith. Amen. That's right. That's, right. Yeah. that's my faith. Guess what he did? He changed the subject. <laughs> I ain't trying to convert him. I love him just as he is because God sent him into my life for a reason. I've known him for over 10 years now. And we're good friends. We can talk about sports. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about politics. But we cannot talk about belief systems. Right? And then at, at the times that we did talk about it, I learned it was based in his church hurt. Anybody know about church hurt? For those of us who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, even straight folks, right, heterosexual folks, we have church hurt. Y'all remember in the old church they used to make a girl got pregnant, they made her stand up and confess her sins. Nobody asked who the young man was. Say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So people have church hurt, and they say, well, why are so many of the churches empty? Well, baby, if you're not teaching love and showing love and demonstrating love, what do you expect to happen? If somebody comes in the door and all you can do is talk about them, do, why do you think they ain't coming back? Mm, so relationships, that's your third point, relationships. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm almost done. So in the relationships, Jesus, uh, he, he aligned himself with foreigners, with immigrants, with strangers, with women, with the sickly, with the differently abled. You talk about the lepers, for example. They, those people were laid out there in those streets begging for coins, some of them their whole lives, because they had an illness, and nobody was trying to figure out, how can we treat them? Why don't we build a home for them so they can have a place to be? And maybe they'll get healthier if we make sure they have food and water and access to, to clean clothes. Nobody said that. They said, oh, just let them sit out there. They keep begging. We don't, they're, they're lepers. They got, they got a despicable illness. They did something to deserve that. Yeah. Jesus came along and said, oh, I can touch the leper. I can be close to them, right? So we need to work on our relationship building skills. I, even as a, as a pastor, I'm challenged because when I go through like downtown, especially, and they have different people. I was down there uh, this other day, the other day. There's people sleeping under the subway and 
I saw a young couple, and I saw uh, I saw an older man, and I saw different people, and I had to stop and not think about judging them, because they're before the grace of God go I. I ain't done nothing so special that I couldn't be out sleeping in the tunnel, Come on. right? I could easily be over there. I don't know what their story is. So how dare we make an instant judgment on them, amen? Amen. amen. So here we are, moving on. Now we're going to talk about resurrecting ourselves. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> resurrecting ourselves. Some of y'all might not like me. I always tell you when I'm going to go a little left. So many of you are spiritually dead, emotionally dead, mentally dead, romantically dead, financially dead. Resurrect yourself. Yes. I'm sit, some, I see folks sit. I'm waiting on Jesus. Waiting on Jesus. My motto for the last 10 years or so when God gave this to me was pray then take action. Pray, and then take action. I need a job, Pastor. Okay, I'm going to pray with you, but tomorrow is Monday. I need you to go online, get your resume together, because you know you don't walk in places anymore like you used to back in the day and get a job. You got to do it all through the computer. If you don't know how to use a computer, okay, I'm going to have Reverend Marcus call you. That's what he does. <laughs> and he's going to help you. Deacon you Teresa is going to work on your resume. Reverend Marcus is going to help you apply. And then I can give you a reference. Amen. We're going to make it work for you. Yes, but don't come back to me in three months again. Reverend, I need you to pray for me again. I will pray for you, but what did you do? And did you call uh, Reverend Marcus to help you with applying online? Did, did you call Deacon Teresa to help you with the resume? You know, I never got around to it, Reverend. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you go on down the road and, <laughs> and meditate and come back. <laughs> I don't think I need to pray with you again. I will pray with you again, but I don't think that's what you need in the moment. In the moment, you need to take action. Amen? So, so so many people are spiritually dead. I hear so many people, all oh, the church hurt, like I talked about a minute. Oh, I'm so hurt. They hurt me so bad over there, and I'm just never go back in the church again. And oh my goodness. Well, you know there's all these other churches out there. There's a church in Philadelphia, there's a church on every corner. Keep trying until you find one that works for you. You'll find a, a loving church family. You'll find a family that's teaching the theology in the way that fits your spirit and fits your life. You'll find a way that aligns with the way that God has shown you. But don't keep coming back saying, oh, I'm in such pain. I'm... But you're not doing nothing. Some people are mentally dead, going through cycles. Oh, I'm so upset. I'm so down. I'm so depressed. I'm so this. And depression is real, right? Mm -hmm. You see, in our what we believe statement, we talk about taking care of your mental health. That's important. But don't keep telling me you're down. And I keep I keep telling you from the pulpit, get you a good therapist. Yeah. I even gave the website many times. Go to psychologytoday.com and find you a good therapist. Because where I came from in down south, they didn't believe in that. But the best thing that happened to me in the last 10 years is finding my therapist. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not crazy, but I might have been if I didn't find him 10 yeah, years that, ago. That worked. Come on. <laughs> and I found a black man who happens to be also be gay, and he's a Christian. So we have things in common. I can go and sit there, mm -hmm. and, be, and, and, and he can li listen to me and uh, give me feedback without judgment. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So work on it. Don't tell me, oh, I'm mentally dead, Pastor, but this, and just over and over. No, no, no. I don't want to hear that, but what have you done? Romantically dead, right? Oh, I'm never going to date again. It's, 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 it's rough out here in these streets. It's mean out here. I'm not going out there again. There's nothing for me. Love is all around you. Love is all around you. First 15 might not have worked, right? But the 16th one might be the one. Mm. Ask me how many folks I had the date before I found who I'm with now. It wasn't easy. And I didn't, but I didn't give up. There, I, there was a time when I said, oh, I'm done. Y'all remember that? Remember. Never again. I'm just going to go to my grave single. Mm -hmm. I went on and kept living life. And when I wasn't looking, I get an amen somebody. That's it right there. Because everything I was looking at wasn't good for me. Amen? Amen. Because you know, we look at things that don't have nothing to do with what we need. God sent me what I needed yes. and not what I wanted. Amen? amen? 
Amen. I'm almost done. All right. Now, next part. Resurrect your mind. The mind, right? Our mind. I see in our society right now that many people's minds are, are almost tuned off. There was a guy on the subway the other day, I think yesterday when I was coming from choir rehearsal, and he said, everybody on here. Now, he was a little off. But sometimes they speak the truth. Mm -hmm. He said, everybody on here is on y'all phone. Nobody's talking to each other. Nobody's looking at each other. Everybody's on their cell phone. Why y'all do that? And he said it just like that. <laughs> and we all looked at him, but then I looked around, and everybody was like this with the phone. With the phone. Right? Mm -hmm. Lost the uh, lost art of communication. Mm -hmm. Somebody on that, even me as a pastor, somebody might have needed a prayer in that moment. And I was too busy with the phone right here. Somebody might have just needed a smile or a nod or a hello, right? We're too wrapped up in the wrong things. We need to take our eyes off this technology sometimes, even the TV. I'm working on watching less. I put the music on, I put my gospel on or some jazz or something, and I just listen to music, turn that TV off. Because you can have it on for hours. Before you know it, it's time to go to bed. You ain't done nothing, not a goal accomplished, not a, not a thing done that was on your to-do list. Next, so that was resurrect your mind. Next thing is resurrect your intentions. Resurrect your intentions, right? We need to think about why we do the things we do. Sometimes we've learned bad behavior or bad habits from our families. And we don't even see it as bad because everybody in our family did it that way. And here we are 30 years, 40 years, 50 years later doing that same mess. It didn't work for them. Why do you think it's going to work for you now? It led to chaos in the family. It led to chaos at the church. It led to chaos in the neighborhood. Sometimes we got to think about how to do things differently. So resurrect your intentions. Also next, resurrect your thoughts. Amen? Resurrect your actions. Come on, brother, tell me I'm going to need a chord. Resurrect your deeds. Resurrect your faith. Resurrect your prayer life. Stop saying what God ain't done. Did you ask God? Did you humble yourself and fall on your knees and pray to God? Amen? Resurrect your meditation life. Well, what's meditation? I thought that's what the Buddhists do. No, that's just centering yourself and allowing God to speak to you instead of you always asking God for something. Amen? Sometimes you just need to sit in silence and let God speak to you. You might get the instructions that you need. You're too busy asking for the new Cadillac, and you don't need that. God might be saying, this is what I really want to give you and what I need you to do, which is bigger and better than what you're asking for. Amen? Amen. Next, come on, Brother Tim. Hit that, hit that chord for us. Okay? Resurrect your self-care. That's it, that's it, that's it. Resurrect your self-care. Yes. Come on now. We got to take care of ourselves. We can't keep pouring out into others, and then we're not taking care of ourselves. Because what's going to happen? You're going to fall ill, and they're going to just walk right on by your house and go to somebody else they can get something from that they need. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Resurrect your self-care. We have, we have an expression here that self-care is critical and must be ongoing. Self-care is critical and must be ongoing. You can't keep pouring out of an empty vessel. Amen? Okay. Fill up your own vessel sometimes. Make a day. If your day is Tuesday, Thursday, whatever it is, take that day and just say, I'm sorry, I, I can't take no calls from the members. I'm not calling nobody. I don't want to receive no calls. Today is my day. Yes. If you've got a partner, Baby, I need an hour. I'm going in here in the room. I'm closing the door. You can sit in the living room. But I just need time for me. Right? That's a part of resurrecting your prayer life as well. Because even though the family that prays together stays together, we must still have our individual relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Woo. Resurrect. I don't hear you, Brother Tim. There you go. Hey, yeah. Resurrect your bank account. Amen. Hey, I know I get some good amens on that. Yes. Resurrect your bank account. Oh, I need $10. I need $5. I need $1,000. I need $100. How many of you know that your father is rich? Your mother God, your, your everything God is rich. God has everything you need. It's an, an over... Good, uh, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Yes. You shouldn't be asking nobody for nothing except God. Amen? Hmm. All right. I get no good amens on that. That's 
so yes. finally resurrect your relationship with the divine Amen. your relationship with God yeah. you can I, some people say God some people say the divine some people say the creator some people say the master yeah. the last few years I've been saying the universe somebody said well how can you say the universe well guess what everything in the universe is created by God so God is the universe God is everything God is everywhere present. God is in everything. Yes. Hey, so come on now. Re restore and resurrect your relationship with the divine. And then watch your life realign itself. Recenter itself. Refocus itself. Repurpose itself. And watch your, your life begin. Instead of all that wilding and you know how you have the line on the road you can tell the cops can tell somebody's a little tipsy because they keep going across the line but if you stay there and you focus and you let God do the work and you submit you submit yourself to God's will for your life yeah. I wanted to turn this to pulpit it's all right, you can. Hey, you let God you submit to God and let God do what God has for your life yeah. then all you have to do is stay intact and stay focused amen amen Yes, 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 yes. Jesus came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Oh, yes, yes. Not for you to suffer. Mm. Suffering is overrated. I get in trouble all the time for saying that. Because as black folks, we grew up hundreds of years. Suffering, 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 suffering. Suffering, you heard it here in unity. Suffering is overrated. That doesn't mean you won't sometimes go through things in life. But that also means that you're not designed and, or intended to wallow in that place forever. Amen? Yeah. That's a valley moment. When you're in the valley, get the lesson, and then get out of the valley. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Ashe. Ashe. And so it is. So it is. And always remember that Jesus was a rebel. Amen.